I'm Amelia Mosley and today BTN looks at the wonders of the solar system. Here's what's coming up. NASA sends a probe to explore the sun. And we find out how scientists are tracking exoplanets. But first up, earlier this year, we celebrated the 90th anniversary of the discovery of Pluto. It used to be the ninth planet in our solar system, but now it's known as a dwarf planet. Let's find out what happened. This is our solar system. Well, it's a model of our solar system. A sun at the center and the eight planets that orbit it. Wait a second, what's this? Pluto? What are you doing here, Pluto? <sighs> what? Oh. Well, don't look at me like that. What do you want me to do? You're technically not a planet anymore. You're a dwarf planet. But that doesn't mean you're not important. Oh, Pluto, your discovery was very important. And it led to us learning even more about our solar system. Yeah, that's right. Let me explain, but let's go back a bit. It was the ancient Babylonians that first observed the planets in our solar system. They noticed that while most stars stayed in the same position relative to each other, some of them would move around the sky. They weren't stars at all, they were planets. In fact, the word planet comes from the Greek word wanderer because they wandered through the sky. At first, we thought there were only five planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Then in the 16th century, we realised that Earth was also a planet. Yep, mind blown. It was Nicholas Copernicus in 1543 that suggested the planets revolved around the sun. It took a few years to catch on, but eventually people accepted the idea. About 200 or so years later, we discovered Uranus. Hey, no jokes please, Pluto. Cheeky. Like the other planets, you can see Uranus without a telescope. Because it's quite dim and moves very slowly, no one really noticed it. Until 1781, when astronomer and composer Frederick William Herschel came along and discovered it. Then in 1846, astronomers noticed something weird happening to Uranus's orbit. Turns out it was because of the gravitational pull of Planet 8, Neptune. And that brings us to Pluto. In 1930, American astronomer Clyde Tombaugh was checking out images he'd taken of the stars and realised one of those specks of light kept moving. Pluto's discovery made headlines. Its name was actually suggested by an 11-year-old who thought it would be cool to name it after the Roman god of the underworld, seeing as Pluto lives in such a cold and desolate part of the solar system. Then we spent the next few decades remembering the names of all nine planets in our solar system, until... Yep, Pluto, my friend, you were downgraded to a dwarf planet. I mean... You are pretty small compared to the others, especially that one, and that one, and that one. Well, all of them, really. You're actually smaller than our moon, and Australia. Yeah, you're pretty tiny. Plus, we've found a bunch of other objects in the solar system that are much bigger than Pluto, but not quite big enough to be planets. In 2016, we sent this spacecraft to study Pluto found out it had a bunch of moons, and best of all, had a big old love heart on its surface. Aww. So to some of us, you'll always have a special place in our solar system. Just uh, not this model because, you know, accuracy. Yeah. How many moons does Pluto have? Is it one, three, or five? The answer is five. Their names are Sharon, Styx, Kerberos, Hydra and Nyx. In 2018, NASA launched a probe that they hope will tell us a lot more about the sun. Take a look. For most of human history, the sun was an object of mystery. What is it? 
It's a burning ball of fire. Wow. Or something to be admired. Maybe we should, uh, let's worship. Oh. Bow, bow to it, bow to it, bow to it. Mm. Mm. Or sometimes oh. even feared. Oh, no. no, that didn't work. It, it's yeah. angered. It's angered. Oh. It is angered. We need a human sacrifice. Go get that young peasant. I mean, can you imagine how terrifying something like a solar eclipse would have been to us ancient folk? Oh no. Oh no, it's too late! It's too late! It's too late! Ah! Ah! Darkness! 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 Luckily, over time, and with the invention of new technology like the telescope, we learnt a lot more about the sun and its impact on our world, like the way all the planets in our solar system revolve around it, and that it takes 365 and a bit days for the Earth to do that, which is how we got our calendar year. But fast forward to the invention of even more powerful technology, and we suddenly had the ability to take our studies right up into space. Zero and lift off. Here are some other cool things we now know about that hot ball of gas. The sun's core temperature is a scorching 15 million degrees. That core is basically a giant nuclear reactor that produces massive amounts of energy, which creates a lot of light. It's also by far the biggest object in our solar system. We also know the sun is actually a star. While it's seen as special to all the little people on Earth, there are really billions of other stars like it scattered across the galaxy. Still, it really is special to us. It's our closest star, and without the sun's intense energy and heat, there would be no life on Earth. Despite everything we now know about the sun, scientists say we can discover more if we could just get closer. That's why NASA has sent its Parker probe closer than it's ever sent anything before all the way to the sun's outer atmosphere, called the corona. The spacecraft is about the size of a car and has this amazing shield, which will always face the sun, keeping it cool in temps up to 1,400 degrees. Over the course of seven years, Parker will orbit our special star 24 times and send back all of its important data. So, if everything goes to plan, it's hoped this incredible mission will help us humans unlock even more secrets of that once mysterious thing in the sky. Uh, 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 oh, oh, it's, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's fine. Oh, I'm light. Oh. I guess we didn't, we didn't even need that human sacrifice after all. <laughs> oh. That what? How long does it take for the sun's light to reach Earth? One minute, four minutes or eight minutes? It takes eight minutes. Actually, eight minutes and 20 seconds to be precise. A team of international astronomers has put together an encyclopedia of exoplanets, and it's a big one, more than 4,000 entries. Jack had a look at what exoplanets are and why scientists are so interested in them. Take a look. All right, yes, I know, it's a hard time for mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, I got to go. Hi, hi, hello. Sorry, you know how it is. Meetings, meetings, hustle, bustle. Is that you, Chet? Shakes the name, intergalactic real estate's the game. Oh, sorry, you... You look like someone I know. <laughs> take a seat, take a seat. So the ad said you had a great two-bedroom apartment that was just out of this world? Yes, the two-bedroom with a cosy kitchen but a surprisingly big sink. Mm -hmm. 
Right, so that one is located up oh, just 41 light years away. 55 Cancree. I mean, it's not the best name, but it is a nice planet. What? Planet? Planet. That's right, 55 Cancree is a planet. An exoplanet to be precise. That means it's a planet that doesn't sit in our solar system. You know those bright, shiny things in the sky? Stars! Well, some of them have planets orbiting around them. And while we've been gazing up, speculating about their existence for a long time, it wasn't until 1995 that the first one was discovered. 51 Pegasi B was spotted by two Swiss astronomers, who noticed that the star it was orbiting had a sort of wobble caused by the planet's gravitational pull. Zero in 2009, NASA launched the Kepler Space Telescope. Its mission was to find more alien planets using something called the transit method. That's when a planet crosses in front of a star, blocking a little bit of the star's light. And it appears to be working because Kepler has found more than 2,000 exoplanets. And when you add those to the ones found using other methods, the exoplanet count now comes to more than 4,000. Which is great because I'm pretty sure I'm the only intergalactic real estate agent. Who are you talking to? Oh, uh, my mother. And I don't actually want intergalactic real estate. I really just need a home here on Earth where I actually live. Good to know because 55 Cancri E isn't actually a habitable planet. The, the ground is lava. Like, literally, it's, it's lava. The exoplanets we've found come in all shapes and sizes. Some are rocky or gassy, some orbit two stars. On some, a day lasts a year, and on others, a year can pass in just a couple of days. But the really big question is, is there anyone on those planets? Scientists think that the planets with the best chance of supporting life are the ones that are rocky like Earth and sit in just the right spot in relation to their star, where it's not too hot and not too cold for liquid water to exist. And the exciting news is we've already found hundreds of exoplanets that fit that description. In fact, in 2017, Kepler found a whole bunch of Earth-like planets orbiting a star called TRAPPIST-1. But before you go planning a holiday, they're 40 light years away which means it would take about 700,000 years to reach in your average Earthling spaceship, which might be a bit of a commute to work for Amelia. Look, that sounds really cool and all, but I really just need somewhere I can live right now. Yeah, fair enough. Jack, I knew it was you! And that's it for our Solar System Special. If you'd like to find out more, including heaps of teacher resources on this topic, just head to our website. I hope you enjoyed the program and I'll catch you next time. Bye.